department, for every organization, we can't run an organization without the human resources department. So the human resources department can make or mar our organization. How can they make, how can they mar our organization? They can make our organization by employing better staffs, better workers, better employees into our organization. And they can mar our organization by employing those who are not fit for the job. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So the human resources department can bring up, can make a company be great and can make a company false. And how can they get this done? We get to know. So human resources department, I said, this is the department started with the responsibility of hiring, promoting, training employees in an organization. So the human resources department will hire, that means will employ workers. So when they employ these workers, they try to promote them when they are due for promotion. And they train them when they deserve to be trained or when they needed to be trained. So that's all about what we call the human resources department. So it's a, it's a department and organization that is saddled with the responsibility of employing workers to that organization. So if I, need to, if I get to need a job in this company, I have to see or I have to submit my CV to the human resources department. Do you understand the human resources department from here? So what are the roles of the human resources department? What are the duties of the human resources department? The first one training programs. The Human Resources Department organizes on-the-job, off-the-job, and induction trainings for permanent and newly employed staffs. So the Human Resources Department, they will employ you. When they employ you, they train you. They put you through training programs. So they will train you through the on-the-job, off-the-job, and induction. So when we go further, I'm going to explain this type of trainings to you. The second one, wages and salaries. The HRD decides on employees remunerations and when they are due for increase. So the human resources department does not only employ you to work in that company. They also decide on what you get in terms of your pay, your payment, I mean your salary or your wages. Are we getting it? Yes, sir. So the human resources department are in charge of deciding what a member of staff will get in terms of salary. Is it clear? The third one, industrial relations. The HRD ensures the company's commercial dealings with other corporate organizations are intact. So the Human Resources Department also monitors and also the, they act on behalf of the company. They are the one that goes for interaction with other companies. This is a school. If we have to deal with other schools, the Human Resources Department of this school will do that. But because it's a school, maybe we stay the administration of this school. Do we understand? So the administration of the school acts as what? The human resources department. Do we get it? But in other corporate organizations, they have the human resources department. So for dealings with other companies, the human resources department is in charge to deal with other companies. Do we get it here? Yes. The fourth one, recruitment and selection. The HRD is in charge of employing and deploying new staffs in the organization. So they recruit, that means they employ. And when they employ you, they decide which position you take. Do we get deployment here? They recruit you, they make sure you work in that organization. And when you are in that organization, they select you for a certain job. So they deploy you to what best fits for you and the organization. Do you understand selection and deployment here? So they employ, that's recruitment, and they deploy by selecting you for a certain position. Do we get it? Health and safety. The HRD ensures employees are taken care of in relation to their health and risk regarding their job. So the human resources department also. So everything we're talking about here is just human resources. So they manage us. They ensure that wherever we're working is not at a high risk. They ensure our safety is intact. They ensure that we are not, we are not exposed to things that could be hazardous to our, to our health. Do we get it? So they ensure our health is safe, they ensure that we are, not, we are not exposed to things that would cause harm to our body or to our health. Do we understand human resources here? The, fifth, the sixth one, redundancy and dismissal. The HRD is in charge of firing workers and also deciding workers that are surplus to requirements. So here, redundancy. Redundancy means you as an employee, we are not going to kick you out, we are not sacking you. But because 
we don't have a job with us anymore, you can please leave. You don't have, you are not functioning in this department anymore, you can leave. So we are not sacking you because you don't know how to do the job. We want to let you go because you don't have any job to do anymore. Do you understand? We don't dance in here. We don't dance in means our staff or an employee is surplus to requirements. Maybe this is a business department, or maybe this is a, a logistic department. And in this logistics department, we have four workers. But the job available now is for two. So two will be made with on that. Do you understand with on that here? They're substitutes, not substitutes. No, no, with the substitutes here. Just a, 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 we don't know. Like like when you say a substitute, that means you are replacing with a I, makeshift. I, 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 with on that is not a makeshift. With on that means in this department or in this organization, what you do, what you are doing, we no longer need you to do it anymore. Not because you are not good at doing it, but because the job is not available anymore. That's why I made the example of maybe a logistic department that has maybe four workers. So two workers are needed now for the job available. So two of them have to go. So the two that are going are made what? Redundant. Do you understand redundant here? Yes. So what's the difference between redundancy and sacking? So when they sack you, you might not be entitled to anything. You leave the organization without being paid. But when you have been redundant, they pay you what we call redundancy fee. Redundancy fee. Fee. Yeah. Redundancy fee or payment. Redundancy payments. So they pay you for being redundant. That's the difference between being redundant and being fired. Do we understand the difference here? Yes. Redundancy means you are surplus to requirements. It doesn't mean you are not good at your job, but we don't need you anymore for this service. So it is still the duty of the human resources department to sack an employee or to make an employee redundant. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So we go to training. What is a training? Training is the process of exposing workers to value-added skills which could make them become better and improve their efficiency to become effective. So the human training means, who carry out the training? The human resources department. So what is training? Training means I'm being exposed to get better in my skills, to become better for myself and to become better for the organization. Do you understand training here? Do you get training? So what are the types of training we have? We have on-the-job training, off-the-job training, induction. So what is an on-the-job training? This type of training, this type of training occurs while the employees are in the premises of the organization. So the, the employees, you are at work and you are being trained. You are at work and being trained. That means while you are doing your duty, you are getting a training. Do you understand this training here? Yes. While you are working and you are being trained. I'm on my job and I'm being trained. That is on the job training. Do you understand on the job here? Yeah. Like I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher here. I'm, te I'm teaching and I'm being trained while I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. That's on the job. Then off the job. Off the job means what? This type of training is carried out off the firm's premises. That means you're not going to be at your workplace. This type of training happens outside the premises of the organization. That's why we call it off the job. So you'll be trained but not in the company. You'll be trained but not in the premises. You will be trained by organizations that are companies that train workers. That's why I said, look at the first one. I said, this type of training occurs while the employees are in the premises of the organization. That's on the job. But off the job, this type of training is carried out of the premises, of the, of the premises. It is being done by companies that are specialized in training employees. Mm -hmm. So this one, companies that train workers will train you, not in the job. You understand the difference between on the job and off the job? Yeah. So in the exams, they might ask you what are the difference between on the job or off the job. Or they might ask you to give advice if the company should take an on the job training or off the job training. Are you getting me? Is it clear? Then the last type of training is what we call induction. What's an induction? It is a kind of training given to new employed workers. Mm -hmm. So as a new employee, when you get a job, you need to be trained. No matter what you studied in school, you have to be trained. So the, tra the first training you get because you have a job is what we call induction. What do I call it? So induction means you are being trained on the new job you want to start doing. Do you understand induction here? Is it clear? So we know the difference between on the job, half the job, induction. 
On the job means you have been trained with, even at your job. You are doing the job and you have been trained. You are within the premises of the organization. Yes. Off the job means you are out of the premises of the organization for your training. And it means that you've been trained by companies that are, specified, uh, that are specialized in training. And the last one is induction. This type of training is the training you get for getting a new job. They introduce you to new things. Do you understand the different trainings now? Okay. Then what are the objectives of training? Why do we even have to train? Why do we need to be trained? One, it helps to introduce new process or new equipment. So when the organization or when the company has a new way of doing their things or a new way of making their production, they have to train workers, they have to train employees so that they can know the new way they want to use or the new method. So if there's a new method of training, if there's a new method of operation, we need to be trained. Do you understand what we're saying here? Maybe the company has, maybe the company is using a certain way of production, but now they change the method. You wouldn't know the method, I wouldn't know the method until I'm being trained. So I have to be trained, we need to be trained on the new method. So these are objectives of training. Do we get what we're talking about here? A new equipment. Maybe we have new computers, maybe we have new machines. We need to be trained on these machines before we can get them used. Do we get it? The second one, it improves the, it improves the efficiency of the workforce. Who are the workforce? The workers, the employees, the members of staffs. So when there is training, what happens? You get better. It improves your efficiency. Do we get it? Efficiency means what? You are doing things right. Do we understand? The third one, they put the opportunity for internal promotion. Most of the companies, when they train you, it means they want to promote you. Most of the time, when you are being trained on certain job, it means the job you are doing right now, they want, you want to be elevated to other position. And when you are being elevated to other position, it's a promotion. So what is promotion here? Elevate, being elevated to other position. Do we understand promotion here? So you have been promoted, but before you've been promoted, before you have been promoted, you have to be trained on your new responsibility. Do we get it? Yes. And the last one, decrease the chances of accidents. When you are being trained, that means the risk of making mistakes will be minimal. It is when you make mistakes that accident occurs. But when you are being trained, the, re the rate at which you make mistakes will reduce. Do we get it? Any question about this? No. So let me quickly recap. We already know what the Human Resources Department is for. The Human Resources Department is started with the responsibility of employing workers, promoting workers, deciding if the workers have to leave or not. Do we get the Human Resources Department? So the Human Resources Department is the, is the blood of the organization. It's the python to the organization. It's the python of the organization, sorry. So without the Human Resources Department, the organization cannot work fine cannot function. So that's why I said earlier on that the Human Resources Department could make or mark the organization. Could make, could make or mark the organization. Could make the organization by employing workers that are fit and are capable and are skilled to do the job. Could mark the organization when they make mistakes in the course of selecting workers. 